Brent, you've been in the news, my friend, not just for being a Green Bay Packers fan and a New York Yankees fan, uh, but for uh, writing John Podesta. And uh, let me, let me uh, put one of those up. This email is, uh, you could see if we put it up uh, right here and right now, there it is. Uh, March, 30, March 21st, 2015. Warning to Hillary Clinton from Uta Podesta. It was not uplifting to learn in recent hours that problems with foreign donations to the Clinton Foundation continue. Hillary Clinton was still making paid speeches for hire this week, and Tony Rodham is hustling gold mining deals in Haiti. Why would you s s want to warn Podesta? Are you, a, are you a journalist, first of all? I'm not. Are you a journalist? Oh yeah. So why would uh, you I be warning? Why would you be warning John Podesta that it don't look good for Hillary? Well, because I am an opinion writer. I have opinions. That is an opinion I offered privately. I offered it publicly. I'll repeat it again today. Uh, I, I don't think she should be dealing with all these people in money circles. Now, I think Trump is much worse. Trump was the guy who was writing checks to politicians to buy influence, and I, I don't know how far he got writing checks to Harry Reid. Ted Kennedy, John Kerry, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Hillary Clinton, and Bill Clinton. Uh, but I don't approve of it no matter who does it, and I say that. All right, but there was also an email July 1st, 2015, and the subject campaign money and negative ads. Uh, you wrote a piece um, informing uh, John Podesta that you were writing friendly and positive pieces about Bernie Sanders as a ruse to ultimately have more credibility to urge Sanders supporters to vote for Clinton in the primaries. How does a journalist or an opinion writer square that? Now, I, I got to be quite candid. You just lied about what I wrote. Well, I'm reading. I did not I, write I, that. I'm, I'm, was, re I'm, reading, I'm reading the report. Go ahead. I'm reading the report as it identified your email. Go ahead. Where does the word, where does the word ruse appear? The word ruse appears in the characterization of your email by the writer, uh, Kathleen no, Blackhurst, who wrote this piece um, uh, uh, exposing your email, tro a Trojan horse email. Well, okay, so she, so, so she lied, uh, she lied about All me. All right, so then you, you characterize it. it. You now, characterize my, it. My position on this, I, I will categorize it as telling the Clinton people that what I wrote about Bernie praising him in column after column is what I believe. And, and it, I did write, it will give me credibility that she could have if she would stop attacking Bernie. Uh, but what I wrote uh, in, in, the, in the emails and what I wrote in the columns that I wrote and what I said on Newsmax TV and various other places in American media are exactly the same thing. There was no ruse. That's just a lie. You can bring her on. I'll be glad to okay, put her into okay. the Okay, okay. That's how she interpreted it. I'm glad you cleared it up as you intended it. Now, Tom Borelli, do you... C, A, a problem with what Brent did in his capacity, and B, do you see a pattern that has been revealed by the release of these emails from writer after writer at the Times, at Politico, Glenn Thrush, et cetera? It just doesn't stop. Yeah, I mean, it really is. We knew the media was biased, but it's really shocking to see the level of degree of the coordination where you have journalists or pretend journalists or opinion journalists offering advice to a campaign chairman. I mean, this is absolutely outrageous. And But the American people understand this. They now have a really good glimpse that the, really the game is really fixed and it's rigged against the American people because of all the insiders. Like the gentleman who, you know, has a fine career. I mean, he was a political insider his whole life. Now he's a journalist. The same circle goes around and around. Everybody gets rich while the American people get really looted of their taxpayer dollars and, most importantly, of their <laughs> liberty. Brent, go ahead. Respond. Let, let you're me laughing. break your heart here. Let, let, let me break your heart. I know you're not I, rich. I, I have not gotten rich. Maybe you're trying now with Podesta. And, <laughs> and no, 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 no. I, 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 have not, I have not. I have not asked for or taken a penny right. from anybody running for office. Uh, not a dime. Mm -hmm. And most people in my position right. would have tried to find a way to do it. I don't right. want a job with her. I made that very explicit that I don't want your money and I don't want your jobs. I want a progressive president. Now, I will tell the other guests, there's a difference between a beat reporter, which I am not, and an opinion writer, which I am. Right. And, and of course, I mean, Walter Lippmann, James Reston, and, and columnists throughout the right. ages have had relationships there's with relationships. political people where they offered advice. With all due respect, I wrote there's relationships, in my, in, but giving advice, in, giving advice crosses the line, I think, in anybody's objective oh, no, way. Oh, no, go, go, read, was, go, go read in Americans. 
Go read an American Century about Walter Lippmann. He did that by the hour, and he was probably the greatest columnist who ever lived. Uh, but my point is what I wrote privately and what I wrote publicly and what I said on television and what I said on Newsmax, what I said on radio, were 100% identical. Right. And I'll tell you this, uh, if you want to talk about giving advice, we could look at Breitbart. If you want to talk about making money, we could look at Trump. But I never made a dime off of any of this. I wouldn't accept it if okay. anybody well, Breitbart, it nobody Breitbart has. quit at, to go to work for Trump, and Trump is a businessman who made money. So I don't see the analogy. But let me ask you one. Yeah, one they, also fired, they also fired a reporter for reporting a dispute okay, let me, with let me ask Trump's you, campaign let, let me ask you one final question on this, and then we'll move on. Um, uh, was this... Were you acting as a so-called Trojan horse? Was your intent to ingratiate yourself with, uh, with uh, favorable columns about Bernie Sanders so that later on you could write columns urging those supporters who may be ingratiated to you to then turn around and vote for Hillary? No, I, I was writing to praise Bernie Sanders because I believe that what he did that I praised was good. And, and, and if you want ingratiation, most of the people that write emails to John Podesta wanted to ingratiate themselves with John and with the Clintons to get money and to get a job. I'm doing the exact opposite. I am challenging the people I support. I am acting in a way where I'm making it pretty damn clear. I don't want money. I don't want a job. I don't want anything. But I think you ought to be more progressive and stop criticizing Bernie. I stated the obvious fact about myself, that the fact that I was fair and generous to Bernie, obviously, would give me more credibility appealing right. to his people. Let, and the let fact me ask that Hillary was attacking Bernie in right. ways I thought were wrong, okay. in ways I criticized the Podesta. So I'm not ingratiating myself to the Clintons, I promise you. Not to the Clintons, <laughs> but to the Clinton supporters, I was asking. Not the Clintons, but the Bernie, the Bernie supporters. The Bernie supporters, so that you could go back to them later and say, okay, your guy's out. I'm your, I'm your hero. I, I supported Bernie. Now, now go vote for Hillary because you respect me. Do what I, I say. An ob I was stating an obvious fact of political life and suggesting that Hillary Clinton might emulate that by stopping attacking him unfairly, which I said they were doing, which I wrote in columns they were doing. Okay. okay? I was just telling the truth as I saw it.